tinfoil hat. Oh, what the fuck are you guys even talking about? Global controls will have to be imposed. And a world governing body will be created to enforce them. Welcome to Tinfoil Hat. We, we, we go deep, homeboy. Eric, open your mind. Drink from the fountain of knowledge. There's lizard people everywhere. That's some interdimensional shit. Wake up, Aaron. This is only the beginning. Dude, you just blew my mind. Are you ready to get your mind blown? Good morning, Swarm, and welcome to Tim Fall Hat. You know I am. You know what I'm here to do. I'm here to Rawr. join me as always, Xavier Guerrero, Ooh. and on the ones and two, Jay Nice, Juicy Jen, Johnny Wonder. Hey, 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 hey. All right, guys, if you want to see Sammy T live, just go to samtriple.com. Events, events, events. We're going to be, first of all, I want to say thank you to everyone who came out to Thousand Oaks. That was a great show. Uh, November 3rd, I, I'm going to be with uh, J- I'm going to be with Xavier Guerrero and Eddie Bravo. We're going to be at the Indianapolis Heliums. Then we're going to be at the St. Louis Heliums the next night. Then I'm in Bellflower. Ooh. Then I'm in Austin and Dallas rounding out my November. Come get weird. Grab your tickets now. Uh, everything's on Sam Triple dot com for my premium content to everything to t-shirts help me help you help me help you okay enjoy this show it's a really good one all right let's get into it very excited to have these gentlemen on they uh they are the creators producers uh of a movie called jones plantation very excited to have them on please welcome larkin rose and drew tragula no. <laughs> Man, come on! Treglia. Leah, Treglia. Treglia. Treglia, man. I'm sorry, guys. You probably Just call me Tregs. You probably don't know my show, but this is this is my personal Vietnam is messing up everybody's fucking names and it's I'm just gonna get start having you introduce them, Johnny. <laughs> no, do that. That's don't how it's gonna up. go. Guys, welcome to the show. Uh, I promise you it will get better than my intro. I promise you that. Uh, thank you guys so much for coming on. Uh, you guys are on the Union of the Unwanted. It was very popular, and I'm glad that Mark made this happen. So thank you for coming on. We really do appreciate it. For our listeners who may not be familiar with you, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, where our listeners can find you, and uh, anything else you would like to promote? Take it, Larkin. Well, well let's see. Um, first, I would obviously point them to film.com because that's where the movie currently is um my name is larkin Rowan, sort of a troublemaker for the last 27 years respect um basically pointing out the inherent insanity of uh political authority entirely in a million different ways I love it. dang it am i freezing up it looks like i'm freezing you're freezing up you a little did, bit yeah. you, you when you gave your website you, you froze up it's jones plantation film.com yeah. So you're a troublemaker? Oh, I have tons of stuff on YouTube and been writing articles forever. What if I turn my video off so I'm just broadcasting audio? Yeah, I was going to suggest if I'm this down. doesn't work, you could call I mean, in, you're gorgeous. That's fine to try, too. Yeah. We're going to lose some views by not having that sexy face, but we're down. All right. You actually like hear me now that it's not fighting bad. Yeah, it's great. That's so it, bizarre. It's great. Yeah. It's great. Thank you. Okay. So you've been, uh, you've so been heck with my pointing- stupid face. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, we'll, 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 we'll show the you. website while you can talk. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, we, we're gonna, we, you, you're a troublemaker. You love talking smack about authority. Go on. It was, I love that intro you were giving yourself. It was great. <laughs> so basically for a quarter of a century, I've been using various ways and videos and articles and books and everything else to point out that the entire notion of, of political authority is basically a ruling class using nicer words. Um, and Jones Plantation sort of, at first it was a little animated thing I did many years ago, and it was actually Andrew's idea to make it into an actual movie, which we did. <laughs> he did. And I, um, but I find that, you know, when it comes to just political philosophy, most people's eyes glaze over and they don't, like they can't focus, but if you tell them a story, I recognize totally inside a fictional story, 
that you're talking about the real world right now, it's it's easier for them to process it. Still uncomfortable, but it's easier for them to process it. So in one way or another, for the past 27 years, I've been trying pe- to get people to recognize that the mythology we're taught about government and law and legislation and political authority, it's just a newer, more sophisticated way to trick people into being treated as somebody else's property. I I love everything you're saying there. I, cu- I couldn't agree more. Uh, the the illusion of authority uh, and the the powerlessness that they tend to push on us I I I completely not agree with you and I'm excited about our conversation Drew can you tell us a little bit about yourself and then where we can find you as well Yeah I'm uh, Andrew Treglia and um, I guess the the best place again just to go to JonesPlantationFilm.com I also have a YouTube channel called Drew Media TV um, that I'm building up but. I've been working in production and post-production for the 18 years. And um, I actually got into it a little later in life. But um, about three years ago, I was I was working in Los Angeles. And I just kind of got disillusioned with everything. And I, I moved here to Arizona where my daughter is. And I just kind of stopped doing it. And then, I don't know, I just made a decision. Uh to just do the kind of work I want to do. And basically long story short, I met Larkin at a conference, uh, in uh, right before the COVID horse shit. And, um, and I, he, we had in the video, it's on my channel where we're talking about slavery. And I said, you know, during American chattel slavery, yeah, it was brutal, but I think they've, it's today's slavery is more pernicious because it's through mind control and, and propaganda and psyop. And it's, it's deeper because people actually think they're free. Yeah. And so they really convinced people because they can vote in the voting to voting plantation, everything that they run the government and they're in charge and blah, 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 blah. And I just realized that it all just got completely blown up. And so he's like, well, that's funny. You bring that up because I did a short, animation called jones plantation about eight years ago and it's kind of went viral and so after i interviewed him and we kind of parted ways we found out we both live in arizona i went and watched the animation and we were flying home with my ad doug and i was like man that would be a really good short film and he was like why don't we make it into a feature so i reached out to larkin's like let's do an indiegogo and try to make this thing a feature and here we are i love it dude and I, you really something you said uh, a lot of stuff you guys are talking about uh, has already really resonated with me. And I know this is going to sound really weird, but you know, I've been having a lot of, uh, you know, been reflecting on my career a lot and whether I should mix up what I do on stage and play a little nicer to, with everybody and all this stuff. And um, as I believe we're on the precipice of world war three, like the war pigs really want them. And uh, a lot of my friends are silent. And not only are they silent, and I love them. I do not, I, I have no ill will to them. Some of them, I would, I literally would die for them. They've done such kind things for me that I would die for them. But their silence is deafening about this whole thing because I don't know if they're just scared or they're just not smart enough to understand. But I thought, I, I had this epiphany. I know it's going to sound nuts when I was eating lunch about how blessed I am that I can really talk about anything I want to talk about and not have to worry about what, what suit is going to get mad at me. uh, Who's going to pull this and who's going to pull that. I mean, we, we can't work 100% uh, independent. I get, maybe you can, if you really want to go deep into it and it seems exhausting, but if you really want to do it, but the blessings of being able to talk about what I think's going on in the Middle East or what I think's going on with COVID or what I think's going on with our government is such a blessing that not everybody has. And whether they're 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 they choose to be ignorant or they just can't comprehend whatever that is, that comes with a price tag. And uh I just feel that like in this time, regardless of how this ends, that we all of us are on the right side of this. That maybe at the end even if we lose there will be people that will be like, hey, at least they fucking tried, right? At least they they looked at what was going on and said, you know, I, I'm not going to stand for this. And it doesn't have to go like this because none of this has to happen. It's all being done no. on purpose. None of this. Yes. 
is 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 uh grassroots. It's all astroturf bullshit, right? Well, you're talking about two things. You're talking about courage and integrity. And I, that's the thing that really blew my doors open with the whole 2020 nonsense and the COVID crap was the amount of people that don't have courage and don't have integrity and say what's on their mind and tell the truth. And it always pays in the long run. I don't care... So many people out there that speak the truth, sometimes they have to take a beating for a little bit, but they always end up coming out better than they were because they haven't sold their soul and they figured out a way to find the people that want to hear the truth. There's plenty of them out there. I agree. Larkin, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, it's, uh, I often guilt trip people. Like about well, I don't want to speak out because it'll be unpopular. Yeah, I, I, I think we're we're not. We're losing you, buddy. Larkin, your yeah. your reception you is is awful. Um, <laughs> I, I'm sorry about this. I I just I think it, I don't want to waste like, your time. We have suddenly. Oh, is it possible for you to do this on your iPhone? Do you think that, that might You could do that, that or you could just call. We, I, you could just call the phone number in there and talk to us from your phone directly if you if that would help. Want to try that Logan? Oh, give me the give me the number and I'll, I'll it call. It would be in that email no, I sent. Uh Yeah. I think yeah. Never ends. Never, never ends. ends. It never ends. Every and, single time I set up for Zoom there's a problem. Every single time. So and, and, I don't know you what know, it we're, is. We were talking. I forget what I was talking. Oh, I was on Jason Ellis's show, and we were we were talking about how how Jimmy Dore brought this up. Like when they throttle you on YouTube, when they throttle you or ban you from Instagram and Facebook, that is the equivalent of in the eighties not allowing your business to use the phone. Like it's the equivalent of that. I am struggling to get the word out that I'm in certain places because they're shadow banning me to the deep realms. And like, part of me is like, maybe I'm just not funny. you right. I mean, there's a part of me that goes, maybe I'm just not funny and it's not shadow ban. But then I realize like what the numbers I used to get and I don't come That's in. That's how you know it is. Yeah. Because you can see it when you're not shadow banned. Versus I at one point got 5 million views on Instagram in a 30 day period. I don't even get over 300,000 now. We've got 140,000 YouTube subscribers and we post things that nobody sees. I mean, 8,000 views. It's crazy. Yeah. I, I showed Johnny. And we can tell. Yeah, and I showed Johnny the, uh, I showed Johnny the tinfoil hat Instagram. In one, in one of the posts I posted, more people sent it to someone than they liked it. If that makes any fucking sense. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, that's insane. Yeah. It just made, the math just makes no sense. It's, and you just. So what does that mean then if they're sending it more people than, than like it? What does that mean? Well, because what they're trying to do is tell us that what is that you hard? can't stop people from sending it, but yet you won't like it or won't show that. Well, people because are what it. it means is like they're trying to tell you that more people liked it so much that they would send it to a friend, but not like the video. It's like having more retweets than likes on. A they Twitter do that to me though. all the time, right? They'll be like, oh, this video's doing 95% better than your other posts. And then you go to it, its numbers aren't big at all. Yeah. And you're like, oh, you need to get together and tell your one program what you're doing to this thing because your one program snitching on yeah, you yeah, yeah. that your numbers are bullshit. YouTube does that. Yeah. They, they, you can tell that they aren't showing it to people, you know, They're, and, and it's, in the, it's in the numbers there. Del Big Tree left. His YouTube went to his his own website and his numbers skyrocket. He goes, "Oh, you've been lying to me. You've been lying to me." I mean, definitely people want to see your stuff, dude. That's ridiculous. Of course they want to see your stuff. Right, but it's like according to so I I like when I got my Instagram back, I had to pay three grand for it. Yeah, which is just a three scam, grand, really. Right? Why? What do you mean? Why did they pay money? Because it was the only way this guy who had an it. So I was t I was talking about this on Ellis again. There was a there was a group of people at a, in at in Facebook that they would pay these people money and they would un delete. But who, it happened to you or XG first? Really? And then XG's account got hacked 
Yeah. And then, well, you know, they know that he knows Sam. So, of course, you're going to slip into the oh, info yeah. of the guy. And guess what? It a- all stopped because this Asian porn star went on No Jumper yeah. and was like, yeah, I banged a bunch of guys at Facebook to get my Instagram back, and they shut it down. Yeah, that's- Anyways, uh, where do you guys want to start at? Well, Lark- how, Larkin, how about we you, start you, at is, Larkin? Is he with us? Are you here with us, Larkin? I believe I'm here. Okay, I can hear you. Okay, right, sounds you great. It. Sounds great, Larkin. <laughs> so what we're going to do is... We outsmarted the NSA. Yeah. We're going to uh, pick up at kind of uh, what Drew was talking about, integrity. What was it? Integrity and? Courage. Okay. And I'm, I'm just going to ask you, Larkin, what are your thoughts on that, integrity and courage? And then you can go off on what you were going to talk about. Yeah, I was starting to rant, but it didn't work. About, about okay. The fact that, so here you know, we go. Hold on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tee you up so you can do it. Ready? Tell me when. Oh, we, that wasn't part of the show? I'm going. Can we edit that out? Oh, I thought that was for next week. No, where he left, or do you want to keep that all in? Well, I mean, that whole conversation about Instagram, you don't want that in there? Okay, then leave it in. Anyways, Larkin is back. (laughs) Chaos ensues. Here we are trying to do a regular show, and the lizard people won't let us. Larkin, welcome back. Uh, What are you using to communicate with us? Smoke signals? Are you using Pony (laughs) Express? What exactly are you using right now? Morse code. Now I'm just standing outside on my cell phone. Okay, respect. So, Larkin, we were talking about integrity. Uh, what are your thoughts on what uh, Drew and I were just talking about? Yeah, I think it's uh, pointing out that the for the vast majority of human history, if you try to point out that the king is a butthead, they, like, chop you up and torture you and murder you. And so now, relatively speaking, we have the easiest situation in which to bash the powers that be And there's still a bunch of people that are like, well, my family might disagree with me and people might not like what I have to say. And it's just so sad to watch that level of cowardice when we're in a society where you can say almost anything. And the worst that's going to happen is somebody's going to say, well, I'm sort of offended. Who cares? And so to me, the two obstacles are people understanding the truth, which is a massive obstacle that I've been you know, trying to deal with for the last 27 years. But then the second one is if you understand the truth and you don't dare to speak it, then everybody around you assumes that you're just with the crowd and you believe what everybody else believes. Because if they don't hear a contrary opinion, they don't think anybody has a contrary opinion. I agree. And the power, the power that the system gets through people just scared to not fit in like scared to voice an opinion that they think, Oh, other people are going to like say I'm wrong or not like me or be offended. It's, it's pathetic how much of the state's propaganda depends upon lots of normal people, not daring to just say, well, that sounds like BS to me because a lot of people think that, and most of them don't dare to say so. I I agree. So It looks like nobody thinks that. I totally agree. And you could see it systematically being just, uh, you know, mass psychosis of brainwashing with how they use cancel culture and then they use the Me Too movement to just silence people they didn't like. And like, cancel yeah. culture was never real. And we said on the show, it was never real. They gave you the illusion that blue-haired baristas at Starbucks could get you, could destroy your career. And reality it was that they they took these bots, had a bot say something stupid about somebody, and then corporations would instantly jump and cut the person that the the whole thing was about instantly before there was any public dialogue on whether anyone thought he actually did anything. And it was the the, yeah. the movement was so swift and it was so traumatizing that now nobody wants to say anything at all because they don't want to get canceled. To the point now that corporate acts who don't get necessarily the views that they so want because they can't come to grips with why they're not getting the views. Now they use cancel culture to be like, oh, I'm getting canceled. It's now a promotional tool. <laughs> Wait a, you're telling me that Russell Brand's on a promotional tour right now? Well, there, there's a lot about that that is kind of like uh, who he was, where he is, what happened with that. 
there you know and nothing is as what it seems on the if it's in the news it's to me it's a giant um it's a, i don't believe anything in the news well what you could guarantee yourself is that whatever the official narrative is it's going to be a solid 90 to 95 percent bullshit every yeah, single time every yeah. time yeah. Gar- there's a that's a guarantee <laughs> and if they're pushing it for more than 24 hours then you know they're lying do you know the number one running. tell? The number one way to tell a psyop is full of shit is if it appears on Sports Center. <laughs> if, if you're watching sports and suddenly something about Gaza or the Ukraine or the Me Too movement shows up on Sports Center, that's a sure sign you are being astroturfed right now into a certain narrative. And the, yeah. the power of that that most people don't understand. I mean, this shows up in Jones Plantation. That the power over what people think and what they think other people think is huge. And most people imagine themselves to be sort of courageous and independent. And I have my own thoughts. But if they can be tricked into thinking everybody around them thinks differently, they censor themselves. Like ninety nine percent of the time, even if half the people there actually have a, a an opinion contrary to what the establishment I wants agree. them to think if none of them dare to speak out none of them know there are any other people like that You're, and it's so it's this weird phenomenon of fabricated public opinion and it's just direct mind control and most people individually think oh well i say what i think and i'm i believe in my convictions and yada 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 and no they don't most of them are total cowards, and they yeah. won't say something if they think that the popular opinion around them will be judgmental. And it's just it's sad how easy it is to control people that way. Hey, guys, real quick, I want to tell you about James McMahon and Copy My Crypto. Let me tell you about Copy My Crypto. Hey, guys, I want to tell you about our man, James McMahon and Copy My Crypto. Guys, listen, we've seen so many people making ridiculous money from crypto. But did you know you could do the same? The Copy My Crypto membership site shows you the coins that YouTuber James McMahon personally holds and allows you to copy them. It's like having a big brother who knows what he's doing. You don't need to know a thing about crypto or how to invest as you simply do what he does. So let me tell you more about James. He runs Crypto with James YouTube channel, which despite heavy censorship has over 26,000 subscribers. Since March 2020, he told his viewers to buy 26 crypto coins. Had you put $100 in each of those coins, it went up to be worth $123,000 of the 26 coins. His top pick of the year, a coin called Phantom, went up 692 times from when he said. That one call alone retired a number of people, including guys in their 20s and 30s. Remember, this is public knowledge. You can go to YouTube and verify this yourself. So if you'd like to join the 2,800, 2,800 members who copy James, then stop what you're doing and head right over to copymycrypto.com slash TFH. That's copymycrypto.com dot com forward slash tfh that's t f h you'll not only find proof of everything i said but my listeners get full access for just a dollar once again that's copy my crypto.com slash tfh the recession is here guys you can suffer like everyone else or choose to thrive james is the real deal go visit the site now They've studied us so much that they know exactly what to do, and they're just slowly building this electronic prison around us. And if people were, if we get the, they get the CBDCs in. I don't think people people think it's just like digital money. That's not what it is. It's programmable money. I'm sure you guys have talked about this plenty. Of course, yeah. Uh, it's going to be close to lights out. I mean, I don't know. I'm sure there's going to be escape hatches, but. Because you know people are just going to jump right on that, and they're going to get they're going to give them money to start with. You know, here you go, here's your CBDCs, and they get the you, you get the you get the uh, the free free income every month because there's no there's no jobs. It's 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 going to be lights out. I mean, we're we're really close. I think we're like on the two yard line. I, I agree, man. I wholeheartedly agree. And like I was just thinking as you were talking about this, 
about how nobody's going to come save us. None of these politicians are going to save because they're all bought and sold. And part of me has a dream of somehow getting to Congress and testifying in front of Congress under some guys that I have some information on something. And all I want to say to them is the first motherfuckers to go are the people who sold out their own people. You need to study history. Mm -hmm. All you fucking politicians need to study history. You brown shirts need to understand that once they, their plan is completed, the first person, the first people to go are the snitches who sold out their own because nobody likes to sell out. Even the, the power bottom lizard people <laughs> don't want people who sell out their own motherfuckers, dog. So keep cashing checks. Keep cashing checks. Keep voting against your own constituents' best interests. And then when when the, their plan is complete, get ready to go, bro. The brown shirts all got the first ones to go, man. Fucking goodbye, because <laughs> nobody likes sellout scumbags. That's I mean, I'll be I'll be watching them get drug out. I'll be happy. I'll just be watching them eating popcorn, have them get drug out one by one. Yeah, <laughs> I got yeah. no, I got no problem with that. Wrap it up, the, fucking scumbag. <laughs> the funny thing is, I'm I'm actually really optimistic because with yeah, all yes. the ridiculously evil, desperate stuff going on, they're making a bunch of the normal people start to go. I What's agree. going on? That I didn't really just hear that, did I? So the often when the when any empire starts to lose its grip, it gets desperate and it gets openly nasty. And that can look really scary because, like, well, we sort of imagined we were free a couple of years ago, and then this stuff happened. To me, that's a good sign because when they're that desperate that they stop even trying to put on a show of giving a crap about freedom or the people, it's because they know they're actually losing the battle over people's minds and they're trying to go to brute force. And that actually makes up, it wakes up way more people. And it doesn't mean there won't be a whole bunch of ugly, nasty stuff in between. But I absolutely think that as nasty as they've been getting recently, more people have noticed not just, well, we need a different guy on the throne, but more people, their entire assumption that, well, you have to obey the law and do as you're told and try to vote and blah, blah. A huge amount of people learned how to say no. And the dumbest thing a tyrant can ever do is teach his subjects how to say no. And a bunch of normal people who are always proud, law-abiding taxpayers, yada, 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 have gotten to the point where they go, yeah, if you do this, screw it. I'm not going along. I'm not petitioning. I'm not voting. I'm just not obeying. And so in the midst of all the authoritarian lunacy going on, ultimately the mentality of the people is the determining factor of whether we go full tyranny or freedom. And that's actually been going in the right direction in the midst of all this lunacy. And it's not, you know, it's not everybody. It's not most people. Like a lot of people are still, you know, blindly obedient and clueless and easy to dupe. But it doesn't take a majority. Just even a slightly significant minority of people who get to the point where they just say, yeah, we're not going along with that. He's right. not doing this anymore. I agree. That can end literally any empire in history. I totally agree. People just, there's so much going on right now, you know, because they have to get more and more desperate when the end is near. And whether you look at it from a spiritual point of view, you know, biblical point of view, whatever you want to look at it, 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 it doesn't end well for them. And they, and they know it. And they're trying desperately to, to either either stop the change from happening or trying to act like they're the ones in charge of the change so that we allow them to continue. In reality, it's all coming to an end. People are waking up left and right to what's going on. Now, there's psyops upon psyops upon psyops, right? So, you know, everyone's looking like, oh, this politician's our savior. But, I, I you know, you go deep dives on them, and they're all part of the system as well, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, I 100% believe all that. But, you know, when Dana, my girlfriend, it's starting to go, hey, man, this like this uh, Hamas attack doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Now you know they're losing the info war. Because yeah. she's one Jewish, 
And two, she deep throats MSNBC. Like she can't <laughs> stop watching that. Like, <laughs> like she she when she thinks I'm not home, she turns it on. And when I come home, she scrambles to turn it off. <laughs> like, like you remember when you, you when you're watching porn and your girlfriend walks in, and you're like, oh, I'm just doing spreadsheets. You know, that's, that's does anybody knock her out here? Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's how she is right now. But Man, that could be problematic in the relationship. No, you're gonna have to bread pill her, aren't you? No, she's getting red pilled. She really is, is getting she? Slowly, red pilled. Slowly, slowly. She is. Happening. She's starting yeah. to wake yeah. up to it and start to see. And she brings up something, and it's so easy. She's so she's lost so many times in in this. I mean, we've been together forever, and. My, I mean, I've always been a conspiracy theorist, but this show came from Hillary Clinton stealing the primary from Bernie Sanders. And, you know, we've been battling ever since then. And now she's kind of just like, okay, what's really going on? She doesn't, she, she has her thoughts and then she goes, where am I wrong? Jones plantation. What's that? Have her watch oh, yeah. Jones Plantation. Yeah, that's what it's for. I will. I'll, I'll have her watch it. Well, let's get into that. What is the premise of your movie? We all live on Jonah's plantation. So it's a, it's a, it's a yeah. allegory and a satire of the control system that we currently live under. It's, is not, has nothing to do about race. It's right. And it's not about it, history either. Right. It is, it is, a, you think it is, but is this not your grandfather's slave movie? Uh, like I said, I don't know how I can explain it. It's an allegory and a satire about what we're going through right now. Through the lens of a antebellum slave plantation. That's so, so the the plot premise is basically slave plantation owners having trouble because his slaves are getting uppity and impatient and and surprisingly not happy. <laughs> and along comes this consultant, Mr. Smith, who teaches Mr. Jones the more effective way of enslaving people. Uh, because it isn't the old school brute force way of just do what I say or I hit you or whip you or kill you or something. Because in that situation, everybody recognizes, well, you're the bad guy and this isn't okay. So uh, Mr. Smith comes in and teaches them the ways to do it, where not only do you take away their rebelliousness, you take away their disobedience, but you make them love you while you're enslaving them. And you make them think that you're their, you're their savior, you're their emancipator, you're the reason they're free, you're representing them. All the BS that ruling classes now do, because the brute force rule doesn't work anymore. You have this many people with guns, you're not going to rule any large-scale group by brute force alone. But if you know how to manipulate and deceive and indoctrinate and all that fun stuff... You, you can so not only right. get people to go along with it, you can get them to hate the few people who are still saying, I don't think this is right. I think we're still slaves. Yeah. And you can get you, the victims of the tyrant on the side of the tyrant. I've been, and that's most of human history, sadly. I have been thinking about, and this show is really resonating with me, is that I was just thinking about how we have all of these these psyops that that are used to, as wedge issues to cause divide and conquer, right? Slavery. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I can get in, I was talking about this in Jersey the other day about, you know, like the, the story of slavery isn't the, the historically accurate story. It's, it's much different, but that story does not allow for one class one group of people to feel they've been slighted, right? So you make up the story, and then everybody can can you pick you, you cause people to divide and get mad at each other, right? Divide but and we, conquer, yeah. divide and conquer, yeah. So, divide and conquer, yeah. So so, but but we have all these stories, right? That we have been told in history in in our public schools that are somewhat. The part of the fabric of this nation, right? Uh, stealing the land from plantation from natives, uh, slavery, women, uh, you know, a second class, all this stuff. But but when these things happen in real time today, nobody actually cares. 
Nobody actually mm-hmm. cares because it is fun to wax poetic about times of the past because you can't change the past, right? Because right. if a time machine was possible, we someone would go back and change the past, but they haven't, mm-hmm. right? So, so we have open air slave trades in Libya right now because a black president illegally assassinated a foreign leader, which completely caused a country to become a failed state. And now we have open air slave trades. Nobody cares to the point that black comedians do jokes on stage talking about buying slaves today. Which I'm not somebody who's like, yeah. everything is serious. But it's like, yeah. we've just been pounded on that this is the ugliest thing that ever happened. And now you're joking about it. And the same thing with Gaza. And I, I don't know what your guys' take on it is, but nobody seems to care about what. And, and I'm a, I don't like e, I don't like the IDF and I don't like the Hamas. Okay. I, I'm talking about children dying and nobody cares. Nobody cares, even though the same playbook as as uh, uh, 9-11 and Pearl Harbor is happening. Hey, hey, uh, uh, Larkin. Larkin, can you go inside? Because the wind is pretty bad at this moment. Sorry. Um, All right. Let me sneak in make sure I have a reception. Okay. Sorry, dude. Yeah. Nobody cares. Nobody really cares. Because at the end of the day, either they're too ignorant to know what's going on or they just don't want to cramp their style. Like, when you go on Instagram now, you'll see a ton of buttholes still. There are women still showing their buttholes. Like, World War III is not on the precedence. <laughs> and biblical end of days, uh, Solomon's Temple, the Temple Mount, isn't in play right now. And it just cra- it's, it's unbelievable to me. Because all I hear is about the injustices of the past. And how there are actually people right now demanding reparations who didn't go through something while they're not even talking about what's going on in Libya. There, you can see pictures of Africans in chains being sold by Africans. Right. Yeah. And as a, as a flashback to the whole thing about courage and people standing up, it's easy for people to go rah, rah, rah and virtue signal about something that isn't happening now, didn't happen in their lifetime. And they can all go, that was horrible. Like, okay, you're arguing against nobody. Like, nobody is saying slavery was awesome. But you're arguing something that requires no brain, no virtue. You're not against anybody. And the worst part of it is, so many of these injustices and atrocities, they were created by government. And the government then uses people's outrage to convince them to give government more power. Yeah. Which is just ridiculous. And that's the whole false flag thing is we're going to do so, so something so shocking that you're going to demand that big government authority come fix it, even though that's what created it. And people don't, most people don't have the courage to say, like, I know what you're pointing out and I think you're a total liar. Like, I see people on both sides of the, you know, Israeli and Palestine thing. Yeah jumping for the authoritarian, well, we need big, large-scale violence, and we don't care if it's hurting innocents, because they did big-scale violence that hurt innocents. And neither of them has the presence of mind to say, what if us versus them, what if the us versus them that matters has nothing to do with where someone was born or their religion or their... Any- it has to do with, are you one of the people willing to let other people live in peace? Or are you one of the power happy bastards? Because there's lots of power happy bastards on all sides of literally every political conflict in the world. And the tyrants know full well that their game ends when all the potential victims on both sides realize, yeah, my enemy isn't the people I don't know in that other place. It's the authoritarians here and the authoritarians there. Yes. And everybody else is just being played like pawns. It's like Ron Placone said, uh, aristocrats help aristocrats. That's just how it goes. Yeah. And we both mutually uh, benefit from, from uh, making the other person the, the, the bad guy and, and whipping our population into a frenzy. And, you know, the, the, the game plan that they've done is 
so diabolical. I mean, it really is. The whole thing is keep the population of America fat and happy yep. so that they get everything instantly, drugs, alcohol, porn, social media, bread Good. and circus, food, so that they don't actually pay attention to what's going on. So then after World War II, which I've said, stated a thousand times, and I've, I, I've yet to be proven wrong, the Nazis didn't lose World War II. Germany yep. did. And the Nazis didn't just, mm -hmm. they weren't brought over, they fucking crip walked over. They crip walked over yep. right into our country and set up shop to the point that they did, listen, if you're trying to hide secretly, don't you change your name? Yep. There was a <laughs> giant <laughs> article in uh, 60 Minutes, back when 60, 60 Minutes did great work. They did something about all the Nazis that escaped to Canada. They weren't. They didn't escape. They were brought in. None of mm -hmm. them changed their names. None of them. <laughs> Pretty fucking ballsy. None of them. Yeah. Right? They just set up shop right there and went to work. I mean, is this what winning looks like? If you, I've, I've thought a lot about this with World War II. I mean, if, if we won the Great War, does this look like this is what winning looks like? This no. degenerate bankrupt culture this is what we get and you take where they're just destroying the local population go ahead i'm sorry no 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 but we were we we had somebody on the other day who was what was the show when they were talking about uh kazakhstan and, and how kazakhstan people try to make it look like it's some goat herding cousin fucking nation oh, um no, they have a city there, right? It's like the globalist but, city. Yeah. They're, isn't that what you're And you look yeah. at the pictures of the city, and it's like the most futuristic thing you've ever seen. And There's all I, kinds of symbolism all over the buildings and everything? Yeah. I mean, it's like it's a Freemason uh, uh, Disneyland, basically, yeah, right? Right, right. But I'm, I'm starting to think that they keep us so sheltered, that telling us, oh, we're the best, we're the greatest, we're the freest, we're the free, we're the wealthiest, we're the everything. That they they never let us know what's happening anywhere else. Or how great anywhere else. My friend will go. My friend went to Japan. He's like, dude, it's so fucking amazing. It's Japan is like yeah, so futuristic. Talks, yeah. And they, I mean, you look at like the I just Middle got East. back from El yeah. Salvador, man. It was amazing. I, it was incredible. I don't know if you if you know what's going on down there with the Bitcoin and and uh, Bukele, Naya Bukele, who took the country over. Yeah, yeah. He, he, like he, you got a guy, regardless of what you think of the state. He's actually cares about the people and he literally cleaned the place up in two years. They don't have any of the re ridiculous stuff that's going on here. Yeah, no, but and, wait up, but, but wait up. What about MS 13 and all the beheadings and yeah, that's but, all you hear oh, in yeah, the jail yeah, and yeah. that's all you hear. I mean, El Salvador's bad. Mexico's bad. Don't go over there. It's yeah. horrible. And then people go like, yo, the people You're are totally great. right. I forget what book it was like that. Where they like, well, El Salvador was the most dangerous country in the world, supposedly as far as murder rates. And now it's the safest place in the Americas. And I went all over the country and imagine being in a place where things are getting better. It's, it's crazy. I mean, he tweeted out once, there's plenty of money if you don't steal it. He's constantly tweeting out against the U.S. government. Yes, dude. That's it. And he's not fucking around now. So he's got uh, the Bukeke, the president. He'll arrest you if you have tattoos. And at oh, one he point. So he can't go? No, yeah. So he started arresting all, like, all the homies, yeah. all, all the game bangers. And then the game bangers started killing people out on the streets. And he gave a public service announcement saying, "You keep killing people on the streets. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna stop feeding your homies." And he told the UN, "If you think that's a problem, then come feed them or pick them up." Yeah, yeah. And I was like, "Whoa!" And then obviously they stopped because I mean they were. It's like retaliation. Like, hey, are you gonna keep arresting us, kill people? I'm gonna stop feeding your homies then. Yeah. And that's where it's at. Hey, guys, real quick, I want to tell you about our friends at DraftKings. That's right. The NBA's back. <laughs> the wait is over. Basketball is back. And DraftKings Sportsbook, an official betting partner of the NBA, is celebrating an unbeatable offer. Okay, new customers can get $2,000 instantly in bonus bets for throwing down $5. I got five on it. On the NBA, win or lose, it doesn't matter. You start the season with instant dub, bang, bang, pow. And with DraftKings parlays, everyone's got a shot at bigger basketball wins. 
string together multiple bets from the same game or build your parlay across multiple games for a shot at making your parlays even sweeter. Basketball is more fun when you have a little action on the game. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook now and use the code TINFOIL. New customers get $200 in bonus bets instantly for betting just $5. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with the code TINFOIL. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-H-O-P-E-N-Y or text H-O-P-E-N-Y, HOPE-N-Y. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort. 21 plus 8 varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. See dkng.co slash football for eligibility terms and responsible gaming resources. Bonus bets expire seven days after issuance. Eligibility and deposit restrictions apply. I was talking to Johnny the other day on our other podcast about how the truth community is almost coming like that game in Squid Games. Where it's like, remember with the big lady who shoots everybody? And it's like, we all start off like, oh, the government's dangerous. And then we move forward like, oh, Hillary stole the, Hillary didn't steal the the the, the, the uh, primary from uh, Bernie Sanders, shot dead. Keep moving forward. <laughs> all right. Russian collusion happened. Oh, shot dead. Keep it's like moving the D-Day forward. scene in Saving Private Ryan. Right, you know? right. Yeah. And now all we're left is that who, 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 who go right now, it's like, uh, why didn't the Iron Dome work? And why didn't the IDF get there? Why did it take them five hours in a country where it takes 30 minutes to get anywhere? You know that answer. Yeah. You know the answer. Yeah, I know the answer too. Yeah, you know the answer. And it's, 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 not, it's not brain surgery. The and, and and it's it, and it's kind of crazy because like here I here I am again with the same position I'm in every time these things start. Hey guys, this doesn't make any sense. Shut up, mm -hmm. Sam. Shut mm -hmm. up. You don't understand. I'm like, dude, you guys are goldfish. You only remember what's in front of your eyeballs. You don't remember like two, three years ago where they where they made you think that we lived in a racist country because a guy who's trying to pass fucking counterfeit money ate his drugs for the fourth time. Right. For the fourth time. <laughs> and you all wanted to burn everything down. And, but you don't remember any of that. Yeah. And it's just. Yeah. Well, to quote Mr. Smith from the movie, if you want to wield real power, you must be willing to do what most consider unthinkable. Yes. And that's, that's the game. Most people don't want to imagine that people in power are that psychotic. They want to think, well, maybe I don't agree with their policies, but at least they mean well. And if the psychos are willing to do things that are so far outside the realm what most people would even consider doing themselves, it gives the psychos a massive advantage because people don't want to think that like, wow, the most people, powerful people in the world would totally like murder a bunch of people to serve their own power. And yes, they absolutely would. And that's one of the lessons I hope people learn <laughs> from Jones Plantation, that whatever you thought you were voting for, whatever you think of the daily news, you have to start to understand just how psychotic people in power can actually be. And then you start to get a glimpse of, you know, things don't make any sense if you assume good assumptions from governments. Yes. None of it adds up at all. Right? Yes. But if you assume they're complete psychopaths trying to trick people, then suddenly, oh, well, that's why that happened. And now this makes sense. And, oh, okay, that makes sense. There really are just that psychotic. And one of the things I... I really wanted the movie to do was m make that be a thing in people's heads after they've watched it. So they go out in the real world and they go, Oh crap, is this just that? Are yeah. we just on the Jones plantation? And they're really planning stuff that diabolically evil to trick us and pit us against each other and make us scared. And, and the answer is yes. They've been doing that for centuries. And most people, if they're unable to, to consider that possibility, all they know how to do is, well, well, we'll petition and later we'll vote and nothing will change for hundreds of years. But if they actually dare to look at it and go, you know, things actually add up. If you consider the possibility that they really are mass murdering freaking psychos. Because they are. <laughs> and people sort of need to comprehend that. There's no bottom to these people. There's, there's literally yeah. no bottom to them. And that's why when you were talking earlier, Larkin's more white-pilled than me. Uh, yeah, people are waking up, but then I think, well, who's really in charge? 
I mean, if they suddenly just revealed themselves to be a bunch of aliens controlling people with maybe less empathy or something, I'd just be like, oh, yeah, oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Like, it, wouldn't even sh- it wouldn't even shock me. I'd be like, oh, that, that makes sense, actually, because when I see how diabolical and crazy these people are, I can't, it's hard to even imagine that they're even humans or they're running on human human souls on, like let's i don't get into it bro <laughs> let's get into it you're talking lizard people what are your thoughts i ain't even joking what are your thoughts i i i am of the mind that there is some supernatural something that has something to do with what's going on here i'm of the mind that there's an alien presence or something, I, you know, I would say 60, 40. I mean, how else can you explain all this? I mean, they do literally do not care. I mean, you see dead babies. They don't care. It doesn't even phase. That is how uh, else offering you- to Moloch. That's what that is. The death of children right. is an offering right. to Moloch. Right. See, I think g- good old fashioned human psychopaths do that too. And <laughs> so far I'm assuming it's just people, but and you can get glimpses of that. Like anybody who hasn't read the, the operation Northwoods declassified documents, that is hugely valuable, not just so people know what they're capable of, but it's in their words. And they say things like um, casualty lists in newspapers would cause a helpful wave of national indignation. So mm-hmm. when they look at dead babies, they don't, they don't just feel nothing. They're happy and excited. Yeah, this will piss people off. And the thing is, there are psychopaths and there are sociopaths, and most of us can't relate. So, because we want to like project our own decency onto other human beings and decide, well, everybody, like nobody's going to like torture little kids to death on purpose. Because if we can't comprehend doing that, it's easy and tempting for us to decide, well, nobody would. Or you know, <laughs> or deciding they're lizards or something. Well, like, I understand okay, what you're they're saying. lizards. All right. Are yeah, but there's no, there's they're so organized though, man. They're so organized. Yeah, here's the whole thing. It's like at the at, there, there is a window. There is a initiation into the highest levels of power, and you yes. either yeah. get allowed in and you don't. And it's like we'll we'll accept the notion that gangs jump people in. We'll accept that. We'll be like, dog, to get in this gang. You have to kill somebody. And everyone's like, yeah, those gangs are so bad. But we go at the highest levels of power where there's way more money, way more power uh, there than any gang will ever have. Even like Pablo Escobar had a boss. He had a boss that told him what to do. Mm-hmm. He, he thought he was free. Until he bucked a little bit, and then then the boss came and hammered him in the name of the U.S. government, okay? But he had a mm-hmm. boss, and to get into the highest levels, you have to do some unspeakable shit. And yep. m- most of this stuff, and this is where I get into the spiritual, because I think this is, even though we just did an episode on um, the simulation and the computer program and all that stuff, but even in some video games, there is a, a final, uh, the final level boss, right? And that guy is mm-hmm. the most evil in the game, and you have to defeat him to finish the game. And to me, there's just too much symbolism uh, at these highest levels. That whether it's the hand thing or the or the fucking you know. Uh, Paul McCartney throwing up the vagina sign for Bathmit or whatever that is that let, you know, it's like they watch it because what we're told is, oh, the Jews are doing this. I go, that's such low hanging fruit. And if we just had a discussion about 95% of the shit you see is bullshit, right? That, That to me is the same thing. Like that's low hanging fruit. It's too easy. There's levels yeah. above that. And it gets into this thing where you go, man, if you know their name, they ain't running shit. They ain't running That's shit. Right. And there's LARPs, right? Well, I mean, at the very least, we aliens are not. They're in they're heavily involved in the dark occult. See, I think I mean, they're d- yeah. demons. Yeah, I, maybe we, we yeah, drop a hint maybe. of that in in Jones Plantation. We even didn't didn't want it to be all about like Satanism and or the dark occult, but we totally included a thing in there 
to, <laughs> because I want people to be able to consider like maybe not these people in office, they don't just not mean well. They're not just greedy. They're like way more screwed up yeah. than decent people would ever want to imagine. The only thing I have again with like lizard people is if there are lizard people, then you can't technically <laughs> get initiated in. If you get what I mean, either you're lizard or that's you're not. That's your big beef with them. Well, yeah, that, I mean, that's I mean, your well, biggest you, problem well, yeah, with the story, yeah, pretty much, yeah. But you get what I'm trying to say, though. Either you are, well, or we've you're had not. people on this show before that say the whole goal is to do all these things that because they believe in reincarnation and they can come back an elite. See that 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 makes more that mm. that's where it starts to make sense. And at the end, also of the bloodlines. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go on. No, I was just gonna say bloodlines are a big thing for them. Um, yeah, I don't know about the lizard people thing, but I'm I mean <laughs> they're definitely involved in the dark occult on some level, where you ha have to yeah. you have to prove you're willing. It, it, the the people that run these countries are the, are the high ups of the dark priests. And priestesses. I mean, and there we've heard of like uh, uh, cartel uh, initiations. Those are real. They'll get you to decapitate yeah. someone with the with the dull right. knife to see if you're part of the crew. See if you can hang with us. If they're right. doing that, you don't think the elite are doing anything close For to that? Sure, bro. The cartel does For it. Sure. Literally, you can watch videos where it's like, hey, this is part of his initi initiation, and they give him a doll, and you can tell it's doll. Like, they want him, him to work for it, so he becomes what they call a sanguinario, someone who's willing to, who's bloodthirsty. Yeah. And yeah, that's, I get that's part it. of the crew. Mm -hmm. You got to do I that. Get it. I get it. Yeah. And, you know, if so, you, go on. No, no, I'm listening. Sorry. Go ahead. No, no, go on. Go on. Go on. Go on. I talk so much. People are like, let the guest No, talk. no, no. It's Shut your up. show. Please go. No, no, I forgot what I was going to say. I talk. Go on. Go on. I want to hear what you have to say. I was just going to say. I'll barge in. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say that, like, there's nothing debatable about the fact that psychopaths exist. It's just most people don't really want to think about something that horrible but it, like psychopaths aren't stupid like there's a lot of very intelligent psychopaths they're evil and twisted and demented and all that fun stuff but they're still smart it makes absolute logical sense that if there are, is even a small percentage of the population that has no empathy because that's the fundamental aspect of a, of a psychopath or a sociopath they don't care about others. Like, all the way don't care. And most of us have a hard time imagining, like, oh, yeah, I could just sit there torturing somebody and chopping them up and eating them. Like, we know that happens. That's not debatable. And to think that for some, the, the whole notion of, oh, you believe in conspiracy theories, we know psychopaths exist. We know they gravitate towards positions of power. Why on earth would anyone think that they're not going to plan ahead? And, like, figure out how to do these things and then try to figure out how to insulate themselves from repercussions by, all right, we're going to have dirt on everybody in our club so we know none of them can get away with turning on us. Of course they would do that. And the fact that decent people don't like to think about that doesn't change the fact that that is the indisputable <laughs> reality of what psychopaths are. And the, so, the, to me, the level of, like, weird cult crap that they're into, which I'm sure is plenty is sort of just secondary because if you just recognize that psychopaths are smart and they have no conscience and no empathy, of course this is going to happen in the most deranged way you can possibly imagine. And most people don't want to think about the most <laughs> deranged things they can possibly imagine. So they want to believe into existence a nice world where there yep. aren't psychopaths. I we don't have that. <laughs> Well, th this is a realm of consequences. I get into the spiritual fallen angels, you know, and uh, that mm -hmm. this is this is they're here for context and everything is a lie. And if you were there to ask me, everything is an intelligence magic trick at, at every single level. And we live in an inverted reality and people don't want to look into that. But everything is inverted I cannot watch a sh action film now that doesn't have a hundred pound woman beating everybody's ass. Like every movie, this wave model is whooping everybody's ass, and it's mm -hmm. uh, and we all just have to sit through it, and we gotta be like, yeah, that totally makes sense. This is meant to get you in a highly agitated state. And you're like, well, why does that upset you? It doesn't upset me by itself. But when every single one is doing that, you're trying to make a statement. 
and you're trying to make something so I can't lose myself and I can't, I cannot just lose myself in the film, which allows me yeah. to have a peace of mind for a second. You <laughs> constantly want me agitated. You constantly want me depressed. You constantly want me fucking sick. You constantly want me wondering, not trusting my eyes, my ears, or the wisdom of my experiences. That is psychological warfare on every level. And the only mm -hmm. reason that they seem to be wanting to change their game plan is not because they're losing money. It's because it's because they can't brainwash you anymore. That's why. Yeah. They can't brainwash and you I, oh. with their garbage if you're not watching it. Yeah, and I was about to say, like, when people think that, you know, conspiracy theories are ridiculous, they wouldn't be that evil. I would never dismiss any theory based on, oh, they wouldn't be that evil. However evil you can imagine, they'd be way worse than that. I don't think they're nearly as all-powerful as some people think. I think I their propaganda 67 years ago was way better than it is now. And they got lazy, and they were sort of, like, coasting on the momentum they had from you know, the Edward Bernays of the past who were really good at propaganda. And so it isn't that they're not trying to control everything, but I think they're, they're starting to fail all over the place. And, you know, a huge number of normal people are sick of Hollywood because the, the propaganda, if your propaganda is so obvious that everybody recognizes it as propaganda, it's not working anymore. Yeah, yeah. Like actual effective propaganda, same thing with censorship. Everybody knows they're censoring like, Contrary ideas. Well, when everybody knows that, it isn't even serving their interest because everybody is literally joking about the fact that, oh, okay, if you disagree with them on any trivial little thing, they'll make up some community standards and silence you and whatever else. When, when people recognize, like for many years, when people said, like I would say the difference between the American media and Pravda in the Soviet Union is that the people in the Soviet Union, when it was still there, they knew that Pravda was BS. The Americans didn't know that. Now they know that. A huge number of Americans now recognize that the American, what used to be mainstream media, is just Pravda. It's just Pravda West. Yeah. And the thing is, it's a very good thing when people recognize it because then it stops working. So it's not that they're not evil enough or organized enough to try the most despicable things, but their game is falling apart because they kind of suck at it compared to how good they used to be where nobody, everybody would like emotionally pledge allegiance to that flag and condemn anyone who questioned anything about like law enforcement or the military or, you know, the, the, the level of blind loyalty and nationalism has been falling apart for decades to the point that, yeah, they're just as sinister and psychotic as they've always been, but they're not as powerful anymore. Yes. That's and what it, people it's say. It's a weird thing to watch. They're, they're, things aren't getting it's, worse. They're just getting more obvious. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's where it's at. And you're totally right about the power. And that's what people don't understand. The propaganda wouldn't be necessary if they weren't failing miserably. And they yeah. just can't. And it's so funny because I remember during Trump, and you can say whatever you want about Trump, and I'm fine if we want to say Trump's part of the system. I have zero problems with that. Would I take him over Biden? Probably, just because I enjoyed him pissing off the people that he pissed off because I hate them too. Uh, so he's funny. My my the enemy of my enemy is my friend at that point, right? So, um, but 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 when when he was just you know curb stomping Washington DC like when he was like Godzilla in Tokyo just stomping on everybody you know they kept calling in the Dick Cheney's and the and, and the Henry Kissingers going oh my god we need you you remember when you were doing it great it was easy yeah because you had a very naive population that only mm -hmm. got their news from the, the name and news you trust even though in hindsight because I do these deep conspiracy rewinds on um on uh 
I'm Rockfin, and we go back, we look at old footage, and you just be like, they're lying, they're lying, they're lying, they're lying, yep. that was a lie, that was a lie, and it was, <laughs> and these people looked right into the camera and went, oh, yeah, we're, we're, we're totally, dude, the Japanese out of nowhere attacked Pearl Harbor. We don't know how they did it, and everybody <laughs> fell for that bullshit. So, so, like, now we're talking about, like, the media, they have no control. I mean, two days ago, they said that uh, it, the Israelis hit the hospital, right? Israelis, yes. And now they found out that the Palestinians, it was their own bomb. No. Nope. Is that not, okay? So that's, that's not what I'm true asking. Either. Yeah, so what's, what's, where's this? It's all a lie. We're in an info war and people are starting to wake up to there that. There was no hospital. No, there, it, it hit like the parking lot and no one died. So there's no hospital at all. So now there's not, <laughs> no hospital. No, 500 people didn't die. Cause, no, no. Cause then I heard it was the parking lot of the hospital. But the point is nobody died. Okay. And and the biggest thing is like, so they do this thing and then they're like, look at this missile, it bounced off and it hit the, even though Israel's been telling all these hospitals, evacuate. That the problem mm -hmm. is there's a permanent record of everything you do. And, and the, and, 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 and a problem on top of that is the people who are used to saying whatever they want suddenly are being watched. And now their their yeah. words are being used against them because there's a permanent record yeah. for whatever the internet is. I mean, they they created it. it seems to be being used against them at the same time. But nothing ever happens to any of them. Nothing ever happens to any of. That's 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 and a bunch the of their thing. a bunch of their former loyal propagandists like one by one or like they're still status and I have plenty of disagreements with them, but like Jimmy Dore dared to leave the plantation and go, I mean, not all the way cause he's still a status, but he dares to bash the establishment. Russell Brand used to be Hollywood and dare and bashing the establishment. Like you can guess about whether he's still controlled opposition or whatever. Tucker Carlson leaves Fox and starts bashing like the warmongering, like their own, when their censorship is so blatant, that even the people inside their establishment, like they say one wrong word, and well, now you're a Nazi. It's like, wh why? Because I disagreed with this one little thing. Like, they're making enemies of every. They're, they're pulling a Stalin, where it's just like, well, I'll kill anybody who ever does, says anything bad about me. We'll just kill them by reputation instead of actually shooting them. Well, except sometimes we'll actually shoot them too. But that, so they're making enemies of just huge numbers of people to the point that nobody believes them. Like the, the, my first book was how to be a successful tyrant. So I've studied <laughs> the concept of, of mental enslavement and stuff for ages. And when they started the ridiculousness a few years ago, my immediate response that I said publicly was, this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen them do. Yeah, they'll grab short-term power and I'm sure they'll be able to milk it for billions of dollars. But they're telling a bunch of lies that will not stand the test of time. Like, there's lots of lies they've told that have, you know, survived for many, many decades. These are going to fall apart. So this is short-term desperation. And successful tyrants don't do that stuff. They don't tell a lie that everyone's going to know is a lie the next year. Like, they plan a little better than that. They cover things up a little better than that. And... To see them and, you know, how many things have they now backed off and said, oh, we were wrong about that and we lied about this and that wasn't true. And we, yeah, all those people we silenced. Turns out what they were saying is totally true and we were lying our asses off. And so to watch their game fall apart like this is really encouraging. But it's one of those things that so many people said, like, oh, they did this thing and it made everybody obedient. Like they're all out wearing masks and standing six feet apart and blah, blah, blah. And I said, it didn't make them obedient. They already were that way. You just couldn't <laughs> yep. tell before. Now they're nice enough to wear a thing that shows you that was always their mindset. So those crazy. people don't matter because those people are never the ones who determine the future. The tiny minority of the population who says, we're not doing this crap. They're the ones that matter. And on that front, there was a ton of actually positive news, but it's hard to, it's hard to notice if you're so focused on, look how many people seem to be believing this and going along with it, that's the norm. Like over the past however many hundreds of years, people blindly believing psychopaths has been the norm. What's different is the number of people, even though it's a minority, who are standing up and going, yeah, we're not doing this, including their own enforcers. A bunch of their own enforcers were like, yeah, we're not doing that. That's stupid. 
when you're a tyrant, your own enforcers are saying, no, we're not doing that for you. You're in deep doo-doo. And that's been happening a lot. Happened in Chicago with some gun thing. Happened in New Mexico with a gun thing. Happened here in Arizona with a bunch of the, the shutdowns. And the sheriff just came out and said, yeah, we're not doing that. Yeah, I know the governor just told you you have to do this, uh, but nobody's enforcing yeah. it. So do whatever you want. And, and, and when you get into this, like, rules for thee and not for me, Israel is now arming all their citizens. They're ar- oh, arming wow. all. Oh, They're giving wow. them all guns. And you go, watch what mm-hmm. they do. Watch how they act. Gavin Newsom wants to take your guns away. Why does he walk around with armed security? If he right. thinks the world is so <laughs> fucking peaceful, why does he want you not to have guns? Because they don't want you to use it against them. Wait, what was the point about? I didn't quite yep. understand your point about Israel being armed. What was that? Well, I mean, most of your liberal media that is has a lot of Jews in it, okay, are the ones trying to tell you we have a giant gun problem here, okay? I mean, and you can get mad at me. My girlfriend's Jewish. I love Jews. I have no problems with Jews. I'm just saying statistical facts, okay? And they're all pushing this anti-gun movement to ban the Second Amendment. And then the, the this country that they defend at all costs because it's their homeland, okay? They are now openly arming. If anybody should be worried about getting shot, it's Netanyahu, by the way. I mean, as far as people coming and taking him out of <laughs> well, imagine, office. Imagine which the, brings us, hold on, yeah, hold on, yeah, which brings us back to what we were talking earlier about these psycho scumbags. So when uh, Rabin, is that his name, the, the Israeli yeah. premier, yeah, 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 yeah. when yeah. he got assassinated, if you listen to that audio, that video, you hear people yelling, BB is a murderer. BB is a murderer. BB is a murderer because they know who's behind that. And this is, I keep telling you guys, I'm waiting for my Jewish friends to get mad at me because they don't understand where I'm coming from. I'm not against anybody. I'm against a government authority and what they're willing to do to cause war. Okay? And I'm against it. And it's like BB is the Dick Cheney of the Middle East. Now, that doesn't mean yeah, that yeah. some of these leaders of these Muslim countries aren't scumbags either. That doesn't mean that. There could be right. a bunch a of Dick Cheney's. Dick Cheney Cheney's. with commando training. This yeah. is a guy with commando mindset. Well, at least he served. I mean, that's yeah. a tiny bit. A no, little more I'm respect that for makes him, That may, almost makes him worse, though, because he's got... He you should know. know what war is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But just ridiculous. Yeah. And again, it's just a game that most people, they don't understand how it's being played because they, they, they want to imagine the best in others. And they don't want to, to think that all the way to the point that there can be giant wars between nations with the quote unquote leaders of both sides just hanging out and having a meeting and having a grand old time because they're both perfectly fine with, with letting their underlings die horribly. Like I think in the Cold War, it, it was completely a show that the Soviet Union was against the U.S. Both of them benefited from both sets of peasants being scared shitless of the other one. And for both of them, it was an excuse to have a giant authoritarian empire. And like most of the time, I think there was never any intention on either side to do anything that would actually endanger their power. They would rather just play the games because the pawns can go out in the field and kill each other all day long. They don't give a shit. They don't even care about their own pawns, which is another You're thing totally that, right. you know, the nationalism makes makes so many people have a hard time imagining that, yeah, well, Congress made the tough decision to send off these American boys to war. That was not a tough decision for them. They don't care. They don't if care. your son gets mangled and destroyed and mentally destroyed or killed or anything else, yep. they don't care at all. It not serves one their bit. agenda. Not one and bit. being able to... Yeah, being able to understand that is one of the biggest things that has to happen to get to a free society, to realize that there really are the Mr. Smith in the real world who think like absolute sociopaths and they know how to manipulate people into supporting their psychopathy, not just we'll get a, we'll get away with it if they're not looking. They'll cheer for it. The cheering throngs of Stalin and the cheering throngs of Mao and the cheering throngs of Hitler and right on down the line, that was the well-intentioned people thinking they were cheering for freedom and protection and justice and yada, 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 every stinking time. 
And that only ends when people on all sides realize, yeah, the, the people who want power over us, they don't ever give a shit about us. They don't. And that should just be self-evident. If somebody seeks out a position from which they can dominate and rob you, they're not doing it for your benefit. Duh. Nikki, and if people could just grasp that, <laughs> that's the end. You know what? And look at this propaganda right here. This is from the USA Today, which I used to love their pie charts back in the day. <laughs> and uh, this is their headline. The young voters don't want Donald Trump, Joe Biden rematch. But Nikki Haley is striking a 2024 court. Nobody thinks that. No. Nobody's Nobody. watching Nikki Haley going, that's the leadership we need. I want to take Nikki Haley and her entire scumbag bloodline and put them up right in the middle of Gaza and have them fight this war that they're so passionate about. Nikki Haley, wipe out Iran. You go wipe out Nikki Haley. You go wipe out Iran. Here's a KFC spork. Go fight, you and dumb she's bitch. just like Al Gore. The people in South Carolina hated her, dude. I, I, I worked you know, I worked down there while she was down there. And and, and I mean, nobody likes her. She's like Al Gore. You know how everybody in Tennessee didn't like Al Gore? The people, if the people at home don't like you, that should be a red flag. And yeah, they hate her. Yeah, 100%. You want a white pill in Iran? You remember that guy, Rick Steves, used to do a tour over Europe? It was on PBS. Yes, yeah. yes, kind of real, yes. Real, real nerdy white guy. Yeah, yeah, of course. Watch yeah. the episode when he goes to Iran. They're the, they, he was blown away. They're the nicest, most down to earth kind people, and they love Americans. This is all between the power-hungry psychopaths that run these countries. All of it. I wouldn't doubt yeah. what and you're saying, thing, man. I wouldn't doubt it. They can, they can rile you. up their subjects into hating each other. And that's the sad thing. The subjects didn't decide to hate each other. Like, you know, the Americans in Russia were supposed to be all scared of the Russians. And for many decades in my lifetime, that was the case. Now we have the internet, so you can just, like, jump on a zoom call with somebody in russia and go um so are you trying to take over the world no are you trying to take over the world <laughs> no hmm. maybe something else is going on here but the level of group think indoctrination they used to be able to get away with when it was a lot harder to talk to somebody on the other side of the planet was just massive and now they're losing that control to the point that all right, let's demonize everybody in china like yeah that's not really gonna work demonize everybody in iran or demonize everybody in Palestine or wherever it is this week. And if the normal victims of that BS just talk to each other and go, yeah, it turns out we're not really the problem. We're not the reason there is strife and violence. Hmm. I wonder who is. <laughs> That's the end of their game. And I think we're actually really close to that, which doesn't mean there isn't going to be nasty, horrible things in the meantime. But I think they are seriously losing control because of our ability to communicate with normal people and the fact that just random podcasts have bigger audiences than what used to be the mainstream media that's just the death knell for their whole machine i, I hope you're right larkin what do you guys think i don't know the reason they're trying to destroy <laughs> social media i can tell you that is is because of that because yeah remember when twitter first started it was so often used to facilitate you know pornography well re that and revolution i mean it was you know in the yeah. You remember in the Middle East, the revolution, and now they've they've made it so, I mean, there are plenty of countries where you can't get on it at all, and they, they've made it so, uh, it's so far from that now, you know, it's not used that well, way Well, it anymore. got good for about two weeks. They destroyed it. And, yeah. it, and then they <laughs> brought that chick in from M NBC, and she just annihilated to, to the sell point. ads. That's why To the point her. that she's almost about to get fired. You talking about Yaccarino? The new chick? Yeah. Yaccarino. Yeah. That's right. yeah. She, she now they're talking that Elon's gonna fire her because she's put so much sense. Like again, I got in trouble for uh, who's that one like Latino guy that got lied his way into Congress? Do you guys remember? Oh, guy is, oh yeah, my god, that guy Santos or something like that. Yeah, he's still there. Yeah, he just well, had a big. He just had a big scene like yeah, yesterday. Yeah, yeah. He's running, so he has a. First of all, he lied about like like nine eleven, and he. Lied about not being a drag queen, and he, he's just a total scumbag. He's just a complete, complete total scumbag. Yeah, scumbag. So I yeah, go, yeah. why does this tranny still have a job? They <laughs> told they told me that I uh, I am now having my uh, reach being limited because of that tweet. Tranny was it? Tranny the word tranny? Yeah, yeah. like on every other post or yeah, just I'm that sure post? It was. 
I think it's on permanently. Uh, permanently. On X? Yeah. I thought Elon Musk was over there. No, he did. Listen, here's the whole thing, man. I mean, he bought. Why did he hire her, though? Why did he hire her? Because he tried to make the elites happy because she's a WEF person. So he tried to play ball. And they couldn't sell ads without her. They, were, they weren't going to be able to sell any ads because all the, all the oh, companies were yeah. I mean, purportedly, yeah. Well, I think it's the numbers were up. Now, I do agree. But what, what ads, though? Like The Coca-Cola ads that you're served stuff, on there? Like, it's, like it's the called, what do they call it? They call it like brand, uh, brand integrity or something like that. But it's essentially you have to be able to guarantee brands that their ads aren't going to appear next to controversial content. And immediately when Elon took over and kind of took the, you know, let the reins go, uh, on Twitter, uh, all these big companies, there was a whole list I saw published. They just pulled all their sponsorship. Well, Twitter. that's how they do it again. Right. So it's the, it's the image or, or the, the magic trick that people are tired of the hate on, on, on Twitter, Not but in all. reality, it's just corporations trying to control the message and, and, right. and, and make people like like Elon Musk, Russell Brand. It's all about canceling people to send messages. Come to heal. That, yeah. the, that you have a boss. And the only reason Joe Rogan didn't get canceled is because Spotify realized they had the greatest brand in talking in the history of talking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's done better. I mean, you could say that Johnny Carson got bigger numbers, but people just turned on the TV and he was there. You have to seek out Joe Rogan. Yeah, especially Extra. on Spotify. Yeah, yeah. Did he get no. did he get bigger numbers even though? I mean, 100 million people. I mean, how do you watch Rogan? I mean, that Johnny Carson get those kind of numbers? I know there's only well, three Johnny channels. Johnny Carson but. was getting like 20 mil, right? Yeah, but not never, I don't think. like He never if, got like 100 mil when Joe yeah, Rogan and would also have. also, Johnny Carson did what, an hour, an hour 20, something yeah. like that? I mean, yeah. Rogan does yeah. four hours. And, and Rogan hasn't had Trump on yet. That day, that day will fucking break the internet. The internet will break. Yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> oh, Johnny God, Carson, can you who? imagine? Yeah. But it's crazy, dude. I mean, we're living in crazy-ass times, but I think it's important and... If we can, I mean, there's a lot of countries in the Middle East showing restraint right now, because once they come in, if if Syria comes in, I uh, Russia will come in for Syria, and once Russia comes in, China and Iran, on based on military treaties, have to come in. What about Egypt? That's how the wars start. Yeah, the big ones. Egypt, Egypt too. I mean, I don't know where Egypt is on that. That whole thing. When, when do we have to? When does the U.S. have to go in? When who goes in? When Iran goes in, it's kind of Mando. Yeah, I think if Iran or Russia comes in, then that's when the well, the U.S. is just, just the, waiting. the U.S. Like is like a little Husky. girl trying to get on double dutch, <laughs> just waiting for her time to jump in. So they go, ah, you know, that's what they're doing right now. Yeah, well, you heard them saying like we have plenty of money to prosecute a war if we need I, to. I yeah. love that they thought that was a concern yeah. for the American yep. people <laughs> who have six dollar yeah. gas. Guys, yeah. listen. We got enough. We can print enough money for two wars. And what, again, we've discussed this, what the duping that people un- don't understand is most of the money that goes to, to for aid, right, to the, to the Ukraine or whatever, isn't going to the Ukraine. It is going to the military industrial complex that is always cash and checks. And some of it goes to the Ukraine and some of that money goes to buy Zelensky a new mansion. It's no coincidence that the one time in the past 20 some years that we don't have an actual war going, we're spending like we have a war going in Ukraine and that's that, that's the price we're paying for peace right now is because it's feeding those those uh you know empty You hands, remember when those. they were like all the all the uh military industrial complex companies like the good days are done it's over you're like no it's not you're never going to allow that to happen until we completely and utterly cut it down now Vavik is saying some shit but I don't trust him as far as I can kick him but he's saying some good shit yeah yeah and it's he's just, just going to have to prove it yeah, I don't nearly trust him either. <laughs> He's a politician running for office. But the yeah. the thing is, the thing that ends the game is when they don't get people to volunteer to be cannon fodder anymore. And I think if an actual large scale conflict where Americans are getting blown to smithereens on a daily basis, I don't think the current American culture would put up with that for more than a few seconds. They're You're like, right. okay, you can rah 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 about let's go protect yep. our friends in the Middle East or whatever. But when it's my kid. You're trying to draft to get blown up. Screw you. 
I like, totally I don't think agree. They're ever gonna, they, no. they may try a draft. I don't think they're dumb enough to try it. If they try to draft, there are a lot of people, and I'm one of them, who would absolutely go and sabotage every draft office he could get to. I totally agree. And there agree. are plenty of people, the level of control, the level of mind control, like you look at the kids now, they're all clueless, just sitting around playing video games. If you tell them, oh, yeah, we have to ship you off to the other side of the world to die horribly. We've been so spoiled about the only benefit yeah. of our society being this freaking spoiled is that Americans are not ready for a war where it's their children being blown up. They can watch it on the news and go rah, rah, rah for aid to whatever. But when they push the game enough that their own underling saying we're not playing this anymore, that's the only time the warmongering ends. Yeah. I totally it would agree. Make it would make the Vietnam protests look like, a, look well, like kids play. I well, mean, it's yeah. like so funny because all yeah. these people who refuse to like say anything about what's going on, all the you either they either they're either the people who don't have kids are barking, barking on one side or the other, right? Because they have nothing. They're either aged out and they can't. They're not really going to get involved in this war. Or the people that are really quiet right. are the ones who have my friends who I love with all my heart. I love them. I love them. And again, some of them I would die for. I'm not even kidding. They're quiet. And their kids are way older than my kids. My kids are three. <laughs> their kids are entering that age because if a war happens with a draft, it's not a two-week war, everybody. It's a long-ass war. So your kid may be young now. Yeah. But they, dude, it will a your kid will age into the age where they gotta go. Yep, anything between yeah. seventeen and thirty five, yeah. you're good to go. Um, dude, I guarantee you'll yeah. be like it will be higher too. It's oh, you like, think they'll you think they'll hire it? Or I like think what? they'll go eighteen to like forty five. No, they won't start there. They they never do because those just aren't the ideal and physical I, people. Like those ages are. So you think thirty nine will be like? I only I think have a daughter. In the 30s, right? Air, Air Force Ones is. A, I only the have latest. a daughter. Yeah. Go ahead. Of, of the right age. If I had a son of the right age and they tried to draft him, I would kill people. I would too. Whoever man. tried it's to force my to son into the war machine, I would hunt them down and kill them. Yep. I mean, you it's really sad. Not only enslave my children, but enslave my children literally into hell. Yeah. Like a thousand times worse than even just like go pick the cotton or we whip you. Yep. Go murder people you know nothing about or die. No, screw you. And I know I'm not the only one. It's the ultimate irony, though, isn't it, that they've they've de so degenerated the population to control them and beat them down and, and demasculated them that now they don't have anybody who wants to fight their stupid wars anymore. Yeah, They've, they've it's, beaten it's the, the warrior culture out of the, of of the country. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I agree, yeah. man. I agree. Nobody wants to fight these wars. I mean, remember 9-11? Well, nobody wants to fight went. with the federal regime. Yeah. Yeah, they did get people whipped up for 9-11. That yeah. was the last yeah. time. But, I mean, like, last if you time. listen to last this dumb-ass Ben Shapiro, this squeaky-ass oh. midget mouse, <laughs> and the way he's talking, Mr. Tough Guy, why are you in your studio, tough midget man? Why aren't you on a plane right. right now to go fight this war that you are so demanding? He's trying to blackmail us. Have you seen this? What? Oh, yeah, I saw that. We don't the nuclear send bomb. Americans. We're going to oh. nuke them. Yeah, we'll find out yep. real quick, bro. We'll find out real <laughs> quick, dog. Ben Shapiro is an Israeli Zionist yeah, masquerading 100%. as a conservative American. 100%. And his job is to propagandize Americans into giving up their treasure and their children for his country. Yep. I totally agree. Yeah. And uh, Israel is the state of Israel, which I still think means they're a part of the United States. And that's why we send them all that shit. It's the state of Israel. It's not the country of Israel. Israel. It's the state of Israel. And, dude, people are doing deep dives. in, And uh, and people I trust, people I trust, uh, what's her name? Graceful? Grace? Uh, she did a great video on it. Uh, Greg Reese did a great. Everyone's talking Kazarians now. Like, they yep. opened a box, bro, that they can't oh, put this yeah. shit back in. Kazarians, dude. And you know what they're fighting over? The Temple Mount. Washkenazis that used to live in, in Kazaria, and which is now exactly Ukraine. Right. And we used to be called crazy people for saying that. And that was yep. a cancelable offense if you brought up those fun facts. Okay. <laughs> 
right? The Temple and Mall, the, 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 the something of Solomon. What is it? The Temple of Solomon, which is the holiest place on the planet. And that is what Israel is trying to reclaim control of, which is what everyone believes. If that is true, if that is what they're doing, then that means that they, that you believe in Abrahamic religions. And if you believe in Abrahamic religion, Abraham is a son of Noah. Okay? And, okay, Noah had three kids. He had Shem, Shemitic, Semitic. That's where that comes from. Ham, which is the worst name ever. <laughs> I mean, your friend, your 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 brothers have these amazing names, and you're you're Ham. Probably Hum. Yeah. Hum. Yeah, it could no, be Hum. 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 Is it Hum? I tell you, it's still not that great. Hum. Doesn't make it that much. Still not that great. Yeah, it's not that great. It's not great. Hum. Still like it's still like a three five out of ten. What, Whistling Dixie wasn't available, <laughs> and then finally, <laughs> and then finally Jafai, which is where the Askenazis come from. So if we're talking Abrahamic. Ashkenazis are not descendants of Abraham. They're not direct descendants of Abraham. They are European and Eastern European. And they had, and that's where we get into Kazarians, and everybody's talking about it now. That is out of the bag. You are forcing yep. people to do deep dives into things you don't want them to know about. Consciousness is rising. Consciousness, Consciousness is, is rising. rising. And more and more yeah. people, dude. I have friends of mine from high school. Their kids are sending them stuff. I'm talking about. They're like, "You're famous in our household." I'm like, oh, "I don't know if that's good." I can't imagine being. A I can't imagine being a teacher in high school right now, and these kids pulling up these TikTok videos and be like, "Well, that's not what internet said." And you just sitting there like, "Yo, yeah. just that's what it does." History book said it. I, we're gonna go off of that. Yeah. yeah I mean, My understanding of the Ashkenazi is that they were c converts in like the fifth century. Yes, that's exactly what it is. And they got their and asses they, kicked by everyone around them. And well, no, like, the Russian Federation ran them out of Ukraine. Yes. Because they were they were supposed to be so brutal to the people, so usurious that they said, you know, please get these people out of here. And the Russian Federation ran them out, and they've been pissed off about it ever since. And they, they want they their pissed, land back. They picked Judaism because it was the smallest population, and they were nomadic. And when you have a real discussion, they break down why they picked Israel, because they were picking a bunch of places one was one was going to be in Texas. Another one was Argentina, Argentina or Chile, and then was Israel. And the reason Israel they picked is because the Zionists wanted to control trade from China, from Asia and Africa into Europe. Shit. And you got to go right through there. Nobody talks hmm. about that. Anyways, guys, great. They are now. Well, yeah, they are now. Uh, anything we didn't talk to you guys wanted to touch? Um, oh man, we got to get you on the next film, Sam. I, I was would thinking love about that. that today. I was driving. You got to be like, you got to be like one of those characters that comes into every scene hot. Yeah, I will. Like, if, can I wear a monocle? I don't know about okay. a monocle, but think about. It. Okay, think about. It. I just go in and but like, uh, but like you're like Ari. What was that show where they were actors and Ari was their manager? Uh, oh, uh, uh, Entourage? <laughs> yes, that, that acting style is an acting style. I can't remember the name of it, but the same thing. Have you ever seen, uh, what was that film with uh, De Niro and uh, Charles Grodin where he's like an accountant Midnight for the mob? Run. Goes, Midnight Run. Midnight Run, yeah. Fabulous. Dennis Farina. Dennis Farina in that film. Like every scene, he comes in yeah. hot. Yeah, he's great in that. Let's do yeah, it. Yeah, that's that's what that's a Sam character right there. Every Thank scene, you. he's coming in hot. <laughs> Thank yeah. you for appreciating my passion. Most yes, people find yes. it as weird. You haven't seen him try to uh, deliver lines yet, though. I will say, stop it, Johnny. <laughs> can we get an stop audio? Can we get an audio version of the Johnny, script? Johnny, you Sam? are the worst a a agent ever, bro. <laughs> Behind the scene bloopers with Sam. Guys, one more time. Tell us where. Uh, tell them where they can find you. Uh, JonesPlantationFilm.com and uh, is where it's exclusively available now. We will be launching it on all of the big kind of globo platforms probably next month, but. Uh, it'll be more expensive because they charge us. So if you go to jonesplantationfilm.com, you can watch the film there. And Which version do you, uh, what do we got here? We got director's commentary, original film, and then what's the all access pass? What's that? You get those two, and then you get to download Larkin's book. I oh, think sweet. There, okay. might be, That's cool. there, there might be something else. I don't, I don't nice remember. Nice website. I think yeah. that also Thank included you. the like hour and a half, uh, like watch party thing we did after. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's I right. Yeah. That's in there too. 
we did a Q and A with uh, Mr. Jones, is played by a legal man. I don't know if you guys ever heard of him. Um, he has a podcast called The Quash, and they can find me at Drew Media uh, TV, and then Larkin. You could Larkin's got a YouTube channel and stuff as well. Yeah, if you look up my name on YouTube, the main thing I would tell people is watch it, and if you like it, show it to normal people, <laughs> people who don't know this stuff already, yeah. and watch yeah. their reaction. Right. Yeah, we've had a couple of normies at screenings, and they sorry, and they and they just are like like they've just seen a ghost or, or something after they, after they watch the film. So. I'm with you, bro. We gotta wake people up, man. They gotta wake up to what's going on, and I think people are starting to see that they've been lied to on a on a, a scale they can't even understand. And when people go, is everything a a conspiracy? Well, your food, your your water, your air. Your 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 media, your movies, your television, your books, everything. Your money, your money, your relationship with the opposite sex, your relationship with the same sex, all that stuff has been completely and utterly manipulated. Your connection with God has been completely and utterly destroyed, and it's done by for me personally, worshippers, the watchers, the fallen angels. It's a war against God, and that's my opinion. And I hope you guys enjoy this. Guys, again, go to samtriplee.com. We have some great shows coming up. Uh, Indianapolis. We have uh, Indianapolis on the 3rd. Uh, St. Louis on the 4th. That's what Eddie Bravo and Xavier Guerrero. Belfour, Bellflower on the 10th. Austin and Dallas on the 17th and 19th. Go to samtriplee.com for all of these uh, dates and then enjoy a breakdown of our affiliate programs and some of our highlights from my other shows. Thanks for listening. Enjoy the highlights. Here's a clip from the latest Broken Sim. You know, history again and again proves you right. And you've been saying for a long time that you thought that Will Smith and Jada Pinkett were uh, both probably gay and uh, just kind of bearding for each other. Yeah. Well, it came out this week, CNN uh, reporting this, but it's everywhere. Jada Pinkett Smith reveals she and Will Smith have been separated since 2016. Yeah. I think I, you're right, man. 100%, dude. dude she, I, it, this did is, I ever tell you a story about her first ever experience in Los Angeles? I don't, I don't think so. Go ahead. Can you write down that time real quick? Is, are, am I not going to be able to hear this story now? Is that no, you can, but you might have to beep the purse. I don't know if they want her, this story name. out. So she just arrives to L.A. She's a comic. She's really great. She's a cool person. She arrives in L.A., Right, and she goes to the ro the uh the the not the Roxy no not the Roxy what was a, a night at the uh what's that old night at the Roxy yeah. no Roxbury Roxbury night at the Roxbury yeah night was that a real club yeah really yeah it was back in the day so he, she goes to the, the Roxbury which at the time what is now is Pink Taco oh that's a great that's a great taco choice. okay. So you go, she goes there. She goes to the second floor. She walks upstairs. She turns around. The first thing she sees her first time in L.A. is Queen Latifah finger blasting Jada Pinkett. Really? Yes. No kidding. That's the first experience she ever had. Where? In, in the bathroom? In the Rockies? Just right there. In the bathroom? No. Where? In the coat check? What? In, on the table. Bang, 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 bang. That's how crazy it used to be. She didn't tell actually tell me where it was, but she never said in the bathroom. She said she turned around and looked, and there was Queen Latifah like, finger must blasting. must have been really drunk to me. That's crazy, dude. That may, it all makes sense. You know what her book is called, by the way? that she's, she's, she's throwing him under the bus to promote her book, which is called Worthy. Isn't that great? Well, I'm worthy. That's one of my least favorite phrases from this type of no, like, well, it's just, psycho it's bullshit. It's just like, it's just the truth is, dude, the truth is that fame destroys people. And there are people who, when they start to see that they might be losing their fame, the phone isn't ringing, you suddenly got bad press, and now you're like seen as a pariah. You start to freak out. Jada Pinkett has revealed that she and husband Will Smith have been leaving, living completely separate lives since 2016. And it's funny. Think about all the interviews she did where people asked her about how Will is doing and how's life. You know, I mean, they just lie. They've been lying yeah. for seven yeah. years now. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that yeah. wild? Yeah. So stupid.
So dumb. And think of the slap. I mean, they were there with the whole slap thing. He was defending somebody who he wasn't even living with. for. Se- they've been living separate lives since 2016. So strange. They were still trying to figure out between the two of us how to be in a partnership. That means a business partnership. Yeah. Surely. I mean, they, they, there was a whole feeling that they got together simply to present it to America that wasn't okay with gay co- with people being gay. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, this is from the Union. Johnny, I'm sending you one more thing. This is from the Union leader. A skydiver was found dead on a Florida lawn. So these people just went out and found a dead skydiver splat on their lawn. And it was uh, the worst condition one medical worker has ever seen a body in. This guy is, imagine, that skydive, if you skydive and you're, you're fucking up, dude, I'm telling you. It's dude, stupid. I've done it before. I'm ne- would you do it again? Yeah. With children? Maybe. You know, those are the kinds of things they ask you when you want to get life insurance. Do you do a lot of like skydiving, for instance? No, you know why I they won't ask do you that? A lot of skydiving. You know why they ask you that? Because it's dangerous. That's why. They don't want to have to pay you out. The 69 year old victim, by the way, if you're 69 and j- jumping out of a plane, you got problems. You and George H.W. Bush should not be jumping out of planes at 69 years old. Yeah, I remember. The 69 year old victim was pronounced dead at the scene of, in a Titusville yard. Oh, it's where, 69. It's not as tragic. It's like you lived a great life. It was about to go downhill from there. <laughs> really? Okay. Vietnam veteran James Scaniers told WKMG the dead man fell hard onto his property. I was asking the person that was lying on the ground, hey man, can you hear me? But he did not answer. Oh, horrible. Eviscerated the body, apparently. Um, okay, this is kind of funny. This is in Savannah, Georgia, not far from where I used to live, actually. A Georgia man was left reeling. This is from ABC News after receiving a $1.4 million speeding ticket. Hey, guys, real quick, I want to tell you about a couple things you can find on the website, samtriplee.com. It's everything you need audio, video, all there of all my podcasts across the board. You can also get my dates there. You can also get t shirts there. We are adding t shirts all the time. We just added a uh, more. More DSing, less bombing. I love that one. Okay. You we also got uh Yahweh or the Highway new shirts Woo! are there. They should be up. It's a great way to support the show. Grab your t-shirts now. I got more magic coming. I also have a uh, mental gymnastics one everyone's gonna really like. Listen, if you want to support the show, rockfin.com, $15 you get. All my shows across all the boards. We also have Cash Daddies, uh, patreon.com slash Cash Daddies. Great way to make money in these difficult markets. We also have some affiliates. I'm going to hit them out real quick. Uh, if you're looking for gold and silver, a great way to go to Wise Wolf. Click the banner. Uh, brown Hydrogen brown gas. Everyone loves it. Harley Ray, our good friends in candles and crystals. You can get a, use the promo code SWARM15. Click that one. And Tim James, who was just on the show, universally loved. You can get a discount on all this stuff on his website, Chemical Free Body. And then finally, Joel Staley, who's going to help me lose weight and get ready to rock. All those there. Click the banners. Support them. Support us. It's a great way. And all my audio, all my video, again, right there at samtriplee.com. Enjoy the highlights. And now, a highlight from Cash Daddies. It is wild. I, and you got, you know, you got these, the, the biotech companies down and then Rite Aid. Uh, files for bankruptcy, which is, I mean, think about that. The grand, that's an like old, grand old brand right there, right? Right Aid? Yeah. Aid? yeah. Filed for They've bankruptcy been, Sunday now, night. What do you think that's about? Do you think it's about all this, uh, all the uh, shoplifting? Partly. Partly. It's the, they got the upcoming opioid lawsuit, which is apparently uh, hanging over them. Oh, over Rite Aid? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, everybody, everybody who had anything to do with that is getting sued. Yeah. But Rite Aid had some shit management also, man. Just a poor, it's been a poorly run company for decades. Isn't that crazy, dude? Like yeah, all it good. takes is one bad manager and a, a, a historic brand could be dead. The yeah. best example of that is the Pac-12. They have one <laughs> yeah. commissioner yeah. who decided he made a fatal decision to build their own network and not work with ESPN or Fox Sports. And it dis- it is literally the death nail into into Pac twelve. The Pac-12- also, have you heard that story about how they took the advice of this one of the guys that is on the board from Utah, who's like a professor? Uh, he got he did his own research, and he was like, 
you know, we got to play hardball. We got to go to ESPN and say we want 50 mil for each school. That's what the that's what we're valued at. And ESPN c- came to the table like just wanting to get it done really quickly and was like, here's 30 mil for each school. And when e- when they came back with 50, ESPN was like, what the well, you guys are on crack. We're out. And that was it. Like, they yep. didn't come back to the table. Yeah. Because one it- nerd guy from Utah said, oh, no, no, my uh, my stats professor says we're, each school is worth 50 million. Yeah, one guy. Yeah, totally with you, dude. It's That's absolutely about, nuts. Yeah. It's all about cash, and you got you got the SEC and the Big Ten. It's it's football is a two a two conference. Well, uh, well, dude, to be honest with you, college football is a major fucking problem, and their major problem is it's becoming a regional sport. And when you only do the South. Yeah. That's why they got to bring in these other, the, the, you know, that's why everybody's trying to come. Con- ESPN is, this is the funniest thing. ESPN is dying. All this greed, all this greed is happening. And ESPN is dying. The only thing that gets any ratings now is live sports. But the problem is, and th- the only reason they, they expanded the playoffs is because they kept shoehorning in the same six schools into those four slots and listen dude if they could get if if L, when you have alabama with possibly having let's say three losses they're like is it possible for three loss alabama to get into the playoffs you got a fucking problem sticking with crypto man and you want to let's get to a real lighter side how about the fucking sam bankman free trial have you seen this shit you been following it all yeah, I mean it's absolutely hilarious. I I think number one, the funniest part of the whole thing was his girlfriend didn't just rat him out; she ratted him out. <laughs> I mean, they asked her on the stand, "Were you? Uh, did you know that what was going on was criminal?" And she said, "Yes, absolutely." They said, "Did you partake in this?" And she said, "One hundred percent. We knew what we knew. We were stealing from people." And she said, what made you do it? And she pointed and she said, he made me do it. <laughs> so this is hilarious. This is literally just on uh, un- unusual whales. Just in. This is hilarious. Sam Bankman Fried of FTX has said that he needs Adderall to decide to testify as a witness in the FTX trial. <laughs> yes. This guy is hilarious. He is such a baby. He is such a pampered baby. As we approach the decision on whether Bankman Fry will testify because of his lack of Adderall, he has not been able to concentrate. Unbelievable. <laughs> That's so fun. I just let you know what this kid, how, like, dude, he's cried about not having the internet. They gave him internet. I mean, this is just like, it's unbelievable to me. Johnny, do something right now. Just yeah. Google, Google SPF and then Google prostitutes and read that one for us for a good joke. <laughs> okay. Okay. Google okay. that one. Sam Bankman Freed and his problem with Thai prostitutes. Uh Thai prostitutes complicate Sam Bankman Freed's defense. Let's see here. <laughs> Legend. This Thai prostitutes, too. I mean that suggests underage, doesn't it? Uh let's see. Um Although Bankman Free doesn't face bribery charges in this trial, Ellison was allowed to testify about an instance when she believed he ordered Alameda to wire in the ballpark of a hundred million dollars to two crypto wallets in China. She said she believed the funds were to br- were a bribe to get Chinese officials to unfreeze two crypto trading accounts worth about a billion dollars that Alameda held in China. Uh, she described the payments as a last resort after other tactics to move funds out of China failed. One of those failed schemes, she said, involved using accounts belonging to, quote, Thai prostitutes to set up, to set up trades that would drain Alameda's China accounts and transfer to the sex workers' accounts where Alameda would reclaim. We, 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 we go deep, homeboy. Eric, open your mind. Drink. From the fountain of knowledge. There's lizard people everywhere. That's some interdimensional shit. Wake up, Aaron. This is only the beginning. You just blew my mind. Tim foil hack. Tim foil hack. Tim foil hack.